CIBC says that Canadian real estate faces the worst market since the 1990s recession. In an article written by Stephen Punwasi and published by Better Dwelling on July 25, 2024, the article discusses the challenging conditions currently facing the Canadian real estate market, emphasizing that it is experiencing its most significant downturn since the recession of the early 1990s. The primary focus is on the Greater Toronto Area, particularly its condo market, where investor activity has dramatically declined. The article is built upon the findings of a CIBC research paper, shedding light on various factors contributing to the downturn and its implications. Declining Market Conditions The Canadian real estate market has been on a downward trajectory since mid-2022, with a per capita recession that is more severe than commonly recognized. Benjamin Tal, an economist at CIBC, points out that the current decline mirrors the pace seen during the 2008 and 1991 recessions. He asserts that both the Canadian housing market in general and the GTA market, in particular, are under significant strain, facing the toughest conditions since the 1991 recession. Investor Dynamics in the Toronto Condo Market The Toronto real estate market is bifurcated into two distinct segments, low-rise housing and condos. The low-rise market has remained relatively active, buoyed by upzoning policies that have increased land value. In stark contrast, the condo market is suffering, characterized by recessionary conditions not seen in decades. A significant issue is the high reliance on investors, who have historically accounted for up to 70% of condo buyers. Higher interest rates, a weak economy, and stagnant prices have eroded the profitability of condo investments. Many investors were purchasing units with negative cash flow, relying on future price appreciation to justify their investments. With prices stagnating and mortgage rates climbing, the financial viability of these investments has diminished, leading to a marked decrease in investor activity. Construction Challenges Under typical market conditions, developers might reduce prices to stimulate demand from end-users. However, the gap between what investors were willing to pay and what end-users can afford is too substantial to bridge. Developers are also contending with high construction costs, which limit their ability to lower prices significantly. Despite the weak demand, new condo prices have only fallen by 5% from their peak, reflecting the constrained economic space in which developers operate. Tal explains that the current market dynamics, low demand from both investors and end-users, have brought new condo sales to their lowest level since the late 1990s. He highlights a critical issue, less than 50% of pre-construction condos are pre-sold, the lowest rate in 20 years. Since projects typically need at least 70% pre-sales to secure financing and commence construction, this slowdown is stalling new developments. Existing Condo Market Glut the, gl the glut of existing condo units further complicates the situation. The Toronto Regional Real Estate Board has reported some of the worst sales figures on record, with inventory levels reaching rare heights. Consequently, resale prices for condos have corrected by 12%, providing even less incentive for potential buyers to invest in new condos. This has led to a dramatic decline in the number of new units coming to market in recent months. Tal asserts that for condo investment to become attractive again, resale prices and rents need to rise significantly and interest rates need to decline. Until these conditions improve, the incentive to build new condos remains low, which could exacerbate the housing affordability crisis. Policy Implications and Market Efficiency The common policy response to housing affordability issues is to build more housing. However, Tal points out a paradox, when prices drop, it becomes financially unfeasible to build more housing. Despite policymakers' assertions, the market dynamics make the solution impractical. The Canada Mortgage and Housing Corporation CMHC, often discusses this issue privately, acknowledging the complexities involved. The article, based on CIBC's research, paints a grim picture of the Canadian real estate market, particularly the condo sector in the GTA. With investor activity dwindling, high construction costs, and a glut of existing units, the market is facing significant challenges. The situation calls for careful consideration by policymakers and industry stakeholders to navigate this downturn 
and address the underlying issues affecting the market's health and affordability. Another article also examines the Toronto condo market and the problems that condo owners are facing. Toronto condo market faces unprecedented financial strain, most investors are losing money every month. In, in a detailed report by Ian Bickies for the Canadian Press, published on July 25, 2024 in the Financial Post, a stark analysis of the Greater Toronto Area's GTA condo market reveals significant financial stress among investors. The report, a collaborative effort between the Canadian Imperial Bank of Commerce CIBC, and Urbanation, highlights the escalating challenges faced by condo investors, particularly those who closed on their units in 2023. This summary analyzes the intricate details of the report, providing a comprehensive overview of the key findings and their broader implications. Rising Financial Pressures on Condo Investors The GTA's condo market, Canada's largest, is currently under tremendous strain, with a significant portion of investors facing negative cash flow. According to the report, 82% of investors who closed on a condo in the first half of 2024 are experiencing cash flow negativity. This marks a notable increase from 77% in the previous year, and a drastic rise from 2020, when only 40% of newly completed condos were financially underwater. The financial burden on these investors has intensified. In dollar terms, those who closed on a condo in 2023 are facing an average negative monthly cash flow of $597. This is a substantial increase from the $223 per month experience by those who closed in 2022. Furthermore, about 30% of investors who purchased condos last year are losing more than $1,000 per month. This financial strain is largely attributed to the combination of high condo prices and rising interest rates. Historical Context and Current Comparisons The authors of the report, Benjamin Tao from CIBC and Sean Hildebrand from Urbanation, draw parallels to the early 1990s recession, describing the current market conditions as the most severe test since that period. However, despite the financial strain on investors and the significant increase in inventories, condo prices have not experienced a major decline. Urbanation reports that unsold unit prices have decreased by only 2.6% in the past year, and 4.5% over the past two years. Sean Hildebrand emphasizes that despite the financial challenges, there has not been a significant increase in distressed sales or foreclosures. Prices have remained relatively stable, indicating that investors are not in a rush to offload their properties. This stability suggests that while investors are losing money monthly, they may still hold confidence in the long-term value of their investments. Implications for Future Housing Supply The report highlights a critical risk, the potential impact on future home building. Investors play a crucial role in new housing development in the GTA, and their current financial difficulties could dampen their appetite for purchasing new units. This reduction in investor demand could have severe repercussions for the housing supply in the region. The role of interest rates and the rental market While many investors are facing financial losses, the rental market remains robust, providing some relief. Additionally, there are signs of easing financial pressure, as the Bank of Canada has recently lowered its key interest rate. On July 24, 2024, the Bank of Canada cut the rate by a quarter percentage point to 4.5%, following a previous cut in June. This reduction in interest rates could help alleviate some of the financial burdens on condo investors. Despite the challenges, Hildebrand suggests that the current situation is not entirely analogous to the early 1990s. He notes that while interest rates have peaked, they are still significantly lower than they were during the 1990s downturn. This distinction may prevent a similar severe decline in condo prices, which dropped 40% from peak to trough in the early 90s. A complex path to market recovery. The report outlines the complex interplay of factors needed to turn the market around. With condo ownership costs rising by 21% last year, compared to an 8% increase in rents, the authors indicate that a combination of higher resale prices, rising rents, and lower interest rates will be necessary to restore financial viability for investors. 
The GTA's condo market has seen a sharp decline in new home sales, with figures in May 2024 dropping to levels not seen since the early days of the pandemic. This trend highlights the broader market challenges and underscores the need for strategic interventions to stabilize and revitalize the market. Ian Bickies's article provides a thorough examination of the financial difficulties facing condo investors in the GTA. The collaborative report by CIBC and Urbanation underscores the significant financial strain on investors, the potential risks to future housing supply, and the complex path to market recovery. While the current conditions evoke comparisons to past recessions, the unique dynamics of today's market present distinct challenges and opportunities. What do you think? Is the Canadian real estate market poised to fall off a cliff, or is it entering a quiet phase before it comes roaring back once the Bank of Canada lowers interest rates? Please let us know in the comments. If you found this video and information useful, please smash the subscribe button and hit the notification bell so we can keep providing you with timely information you can apply on a daily basis.